Each day, your body meets millions of disease-causing microorganisms. And every opening in the body, as well as any breaks in the skin, give pathogens a way in. The more pathogens that get into your body, the more likely it is that you will get an infectious disease. Fortunately, your body has many defense mechanisms that work together to keep pathogens out. Non-specific defenses stop the microorganisms from entering the body in the first place. And if pathogens are able to enter the body, you have specific defenses that target the pathogens to try and reduce their effects on the body. The most obvious barrier preventing pathogens from entering is the skin, which is very thick and covers most of the body. Pathogens usually only cross this barrier through wounds or by an animal vector that pierces the skin. So the skin is a physical barrier because pathogens have difficulty getting past it. The skin has additional defenses because it contains glands that secrete substances that are antimicrobial onto the surface of the skin. These substances include lysozyme, which is an enzyme that breaks down the cell walls of some types of bacteria. Therefore, lysozyme is a chemical defense. You'll remember that when the skin barrier is broken and causes bleeding, platelets are quickly on hand to help clot the blood, forming scabs over wounds, and to help restore the physical barrier of the skin. Your respiratory system can be seen as a slight weak link in your body's defenses, as every time you breathe in, you draw in air full of pathogens into your lungs. However, your nose is full of hairs and produces a sticky liquid called mucus. The hairs in the mucus will contract dust and particles of air that may contain pathogens or irritate your lungs. So if you spend time in an environment with lots of air pollution, such as large cities, the mucus you produce when you blow your nose is blackened, showing that the system has worked to trap those particles. The trachea and bronchi also secrete mucus that traps pathogens from the air. The lining of both the trachea and the bronchi is also covered in cilia. These are tiny hair-like projections from the cells that line the airways. The cilia can then beat, which wafts the mucus to the back of the throat, where it can then be swallowed. Food, drink, and the mucus from the respiratory system can be swallowed and all pass down the esophagus to the stomach. Some of the cells aligning the stomach secrete hydrochloric acid, reducing the pH of the stomach contents down to about two. At this acidity, many pathogens are destroyed. There are only a few types of bacteria, such as Helicobacter pylori, that are adapted to be acid resistant. In spite of your body's first line of defense mechanisms, some pathogens still make it through into your body. Once there, they will meet your second line of defense, the white blood cells of the immune system. The immune system will try and destroy the pathogen in a variety of ways. These include phagocytosis, which is the engulfing of foreign cells, so pathogens, and the digestion of them. Other white blood cells will produce antitoxins that counteract the toxins produced by invading bacteria. And then some white blood cells produce antibodies, which is a form of unique pathogen flagging so that they can quickly find the pathogen and destroy it. Each pathogen that enters the body has unique surface proteins called antigens. And there are some white blood cells that can produce special chemicals called antibodies, which can target particular bacteria or viruses and destroy them. You need a unique antibody for each type of pathogen, as the antigen on the surface will have a unique structure. Antibodies bind to these antigens and flag them as foreign cells to be destroyed by the white blood cell. When your white blood cells have produced antibodies once against a particular pathogen, 
They can be made very quickly if that pathogen ever returns to the body. And this stops you from getting a disease twice. So the person can be described as immune to a pathogen as they will not become ill when exposed to the pathogen a second time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Check out more of our content and remember to subscribe to our channel.